Having a man portable pack axe is an essential piece of gear for any outdoorsman. So what makes the Council Tools Woodscraft series of pack axes any different from all the rest? It's the performance. Oh my gosh. Look at that, dude. That's prop, that is smooth as butter. Oh my gosh. Dude, feel it. Oh, that is ridiculous. Have you ever seen an ax cut like that? That's smoother than a rocking chair at Cracker oh Barrel. Oh my gosh, dude. That's nice. Whoa, that is scary. Powered by a two pound head made out of 5160 high carbon steel with not only a front heat treat, but a rear heat treat as well, giving it more strength throughout the head. It's always fun to do an ax video with you guys, and I'm just so thankful for you joining me today as we're gonna dive in to all the capabilities of this 19 inch handle version. They do have a 24 inch handle version, Woodscraft pack ax from Council Tool. And there will be some competition against my 20 inch Hulksbrook. So if you love chopping and splitting wood, stick around, because it's gonna be a wild ride. And just like we strap an ax to our packs to enhance our capabilities when we hit the trail, today's sponsor does the same thing by enhancing our hydration options by letting us ditch those cumbersome large water bladders, open up space inside of our packs, but still give us hands-free hydration by attaching to our exterior hard-sided water bottles. And I'm talking about hard-side hydration. This American-based small business has come up with a creative solution for giving us still the hands-free ability, but a lot easier access to our water systems. With the original swig rig being able to be attached to your favorite 32 or 48 ounce Nalgene's and many other wide mouth water bottles. But now with the ultralight being able to be attached to your favorite smart bottle just lightens the ability and gives you more versatility in your hydration needs. Meaning that the refilling, cleaning and maintenance of your hydration system when you're on trail becomes a whole lot easier. And having used the original for over a year across America on so many adventures and now having the option to even lighten the load and even extend the amount of water being taken with me with the ultralight, it has become a piece of kit that I regularly rely on to give me hydration when I'm on trail. And so guys, I'll have a link in the description box below over to hard side hydration, as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code you can apply towards your purchase. Go check out all the different options and variety that they have to offer so that you can better streamline your hydration needs the next time you hit the trail. Now, obviously a lot of the action is happening right up here near the head and it's just visually striking to me. 5160 is somewhat unusual in the traditional axe hatchet arena. Now, what makes 5160 a little bit special is that it's essentially a spring steel, a high carbon steel, but then they add some chromium to it, which then helps with the hardening ability of the tool and makes it extra tough. So you're getting an extra level of toughness than you do out of a lot of other basic high carbons you see most other axes being forged with in this style, which means you're just gonna see a better level of shock resistance, edge stability, and therefore keeping an edge for a longer period of time than you will see on many other axes. The second aspect is the bit, AKA the edge, right up here. Not only is about 3.3 inches overall, I love the very gradual sweep down into that beard portion right there. You can see how long that bit is in comparison to my one and three quarter pound Hulsebrook Salem axe. Similar size, we'll be kind of running it in, talking through a little bit. You can see there the massive difference between the length and therefore the angle of the bit, which means that the um, Salem here is has a more abrupt angle, better for splitting, but not as good on more precision tasks that I tend to find I put my pack axes or you know whatever we want to call them, large hatchets, compact axes, whatever they are, these like 18 to 20, 25 inch um, axes. I tend to be more precise. I want more precision. I want finer cuts. I want to be able to do that. I'm not just splitting giant, huge, you know, eight inch diameter logs. This 
bite is better suited for splitting and not as suited for deep bites into chopping and finer work like this model is. And it also has a more precise angle at 25 degrees on each side, meaning that it just bites deeper and is better for the precision chops than you would get on a lot of other axes of this size and it was ridiculously sharp out of the box so after eight months obviously me resharpening but i mean that's how it was if not even better from the factory which is excellent to see and that will continue through that bevel keeping that more precision than flaring out and then coming to just a hair, like 1.1 inches of overall thickness back here by the pole. That is the counterweight that we have back here that you can also use for pommeling, striking, um, you know, hand mirroring tent pegs, things like that. And quick pro tip, if you're gonna ever use the back of any ax as a hammer, which you can easily do, do not leave the mask on there. It actually, the inertia makes the blade bite into the leather over time and it will ruin your mask, take it off or hammer on the side if you're ever doing hammering or pommeling into stakes or things like that. Just a little pro tip there for you. The pole is really well balanced and you'll notice again, it stands off a little bit more than on the Hulsebrook uh, design, meaning that it has an excellent maneuverability and balance compared to many other hatchets or pack axes of this size. So by no means is it a thin head, but it's just takes a lot longer and it's a lot more gradual to get back to that inch and 0.1 thickness that we see really where the helv starts right where it be connects so you have this excellent very gradual um ability to bite into wood so chopping is really where this is going to excel delimbing uh, and going through larger pieces of wood than even my other axe can of similar size because of that geometry, because of the weight and the balance factor, and just feels very in control as you're doing it. And it will take out bigger chunks quicker than many, many of its similar sized brethren. And that flows right into the different shaping tasks that you would do with a pack ax to help make your knife work easier. If you're shaping, say, utensils, different types of tent pegs, different types of triggers, traps, other crafts that you would be doing wood craft with the tool it really is set up for that if that name is extremely fitting for this style finally into the carving and making shaving for a fire if you need to something like that it can easily do that and because of the way it's designed i was able to manipulate it very easily it was more enjoyable to do that with that compared to that Hulsebrook and many other axes and hatchets of similar size that I own. Really cool that it has a razor sharp top edge as well, so you can throw sparks with this, no problem off of fire steel. The one area where it does okay is in splitting. Now, it's not designed to be a splitter, and I have here about a four inch diameter log. It can easily, without much energy, one to two strikes, get any log like this split, which is what you're gonna mainly be handling, particularly if you're packing this out or just doing simple tasks around a campfire. Now, again, if you have to split the whole, you know, set behind me, yes, of course, a large two-handed, you know, 30 to 36 uh, inch long handled, three to five pound head is gonna be a lot better for that type of task, but for camp, tasks of splitting wood it's going to be able to handle the majority of those tasks but axes like that Huxbrook, which has a more abrupt angle will be better for the splitting aspect of the tools i love history so the history of council tool is that it was originally found in 1886 right here in america so they've been making axes for well over 200 years uh, they make these in north carolina and in the 1930s the u.s forest service came to Council Tool, asked them to design a few tools for them and supply the service with axes. And they have been doing that ever since. Now, I actually paid last year about 150 for this model. Currently, when I'm making this video, it's actually 135 for the 19 inch model over on Amazon. So I will have links in the description box below. Always appreciate it, regardless if it's tools that you see in this video or just gear in general. When it's time to make a gear purchase, you use the hyperlinks in the description box. It's free for you, helps me continue to do what I do. So um, I will have those links to that. And if you want to try the 24, that one is like 20, uh, 
150 right now if you want the 24 inch handle version um, there's that model and i'll have a few other council tools as well as competitive options in those links in the description so go check them out and uh, it's hard to find something with the materials and the quality that i'm seeing and just the performance at the price the council tool is producing these in. So on the handle, we have excellent graining straight up and down. And if you're new to wood handled axes and hatchets, when you look at the bottom, you can see the grain of the wood. And if it's straight up and down, that's the best. And then as it starts to rotate to the side, it gets less and less strong um, and over time could eventually break and like straight horizontal, straight across. Uh, is the worst. That means it's just a very low quality handle and potentially a low quality axe. So just keep that in consideration. Straight up and down is ideal when you're picking out a wood handled hatchet or axe. This one is the 19, again, inch version. There is the 24 inch version. As I have used this now for six months and gotten extremely comfortable with it, I think I am going to gravitate and at least try the 24 just to see if I can get even more, you know, um, energy and inertia with each swing for the 19 inch size is perfect for just about every type of camp task on the handle side. So to button it all up, I gravitate to this model more than any of my other axes that I have in this size range since having picked it up. And I'm definitely going to try out that 24 incher just to see which one I prefer more. Um, I look forward to hearing from you guys. What's your thoughts on Council Tool? Uh, if you own this one or other ones, you know, what's been your experience, good or bad? I always appreciate the comments below. And let me know what your thoughts are also on 19 versus 24 inch. Um, you know, what would be your thoughts there as well? I always appreciate your guys' amazing feedback. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and it's been fun and entertaining for you. I invite you to check out the other video and to again, subscribe if you haven't yet become part of the Gideon's Tactical family. Until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.